Hey everybody, welcome to Ready. This is not Ready Check. Let's start over. Welcome to <laughs> what? <laughs> I've already screwed it up, us. Um, welcome to Once Upon a Tabletop, the game show where we role play the stuff at the table. My wig was so difficult to get on that it threw me completely off. Hi, chummers. Welcome to Once Upon a Tabletop, the gaming show where we get together, play a board game, and role play the action at the table. My name is Bobby Frankenberger, and I'm just one of your two today main hosts, but we've got a guest as usual. Here with me, as always, is my co host, Oz. Say hello, Oz. Hello, how are you? I'm doing very, very well. I'm very excited for our game tonight. Normally I have a lightning question for Cliff. I don't have a lightning question for you, but you know what? Let's just say- I never get the lightning question. So I know, no. let's just say that the lightning question is only for Cliff and because he's not here, we don't have one. So I will just jump <laughs> right to <laughs> introducing uh, our, uh, I'll jump right to introducing our guest. Um, as always, we have a guest, and with us tonight is our uh, a really, I think, an awesome guest because because the reason tonight is he's so relevant to the game that we're playing tonight that you might actually even think that we did it on purpose. Um, one of the voices <laughs> on the Mythos Busters podcast, a podcast about the Arkham Horror card game, Scott Sage Armstrong. Hello, Scott. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's nice to be here. It's uh, it's nice to have you here. How um, how long have you been playing this game that we're about to be playing? Which I guess we'll go ahead and spoil is uh, Ar the Arkham Horror. Card. What am I talking about? Spoiling. We we tweet <laughs> about it and everything. So, um, uh, it's I've played right since the launch, so it's been about uh, a little over two years. And and was the podcast that you have, which I'll get you to talk about in. Uh, a little bit more tell everybody what it's about in a second was it was it was was it like immediate were you just like well time to do a podcast about this game it just came out yeah actually it was a, a friend of mine a couple friends of mine started a podcast and i had a previous podcast uh that was just ending and so we kind of put our heads together and i was like hey i'm available and uh yeah jumped on well that's awesome we love podcasts here on the Shadowcasters network um oz have you have you played this game before i have not uh no this is my first time i've played literally almost every other no every other game in the fantasy flight arkhamverse i've never played this one so i th i have played we've of course played mansions of madness on here i've played the hey thanks palmer for uh precisely 98 bits um <laughs> i would ask where the other two went but that would make me sound greedy um, <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, the, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, the Mythos Busters podcast, Scott. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Mythos Busters, basically we talk about the Arkham Horror LCG. Um, uh, our episodes are usually around two hours. They're quite verbose. Uh, we go into talking about news. We talk about strategy. We talk about, uh, all the scenarios and campaigns and stuff. Um, we talk about user content that a lot of people put out. Uh, I will warn you, it's not a family show. We work hard for our explicit tag. Um, <laughs> so don't listen with children. So do uh, we. Yeah, we yeah, do. <laughs> I, you know, and it's not like we swear the air blue or anything, but it, it's not for children. <laughs> I mean, I mean, come on, um, let's be fair. Even if you weren't swearing, is 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 the Arkham Horror Horrorverse uh, really, really for children anyway? <laughs> that's fair, especially with some of the art in these games. Um, yeah. Probably not good as you know a toddler preschool game. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe let your uh, three year old sit this one out. <laughs> yeah. Hey, thanks, uh, Psychotron, for Thank uh, for the extra two bits. All right, uh, picking up picking <laughs> up picking up Palmer's slack. I appreciate that. <laughs> as you can tell, uh, every time that you donate or cheer or donate or anything, uh, so anything to support our channel. Uh, you're killing the stream boss slowly, and then once the stream boss is defeated, we do a special thing. Uh, we play these board games called Spinning Wheel, the Once Upon a Wheel, and something will happen. You get the, the stream boss gets to decide. And before we get into that, Oz, why don't we uh, tell everybody officially what game we're we're playing? And and or Scott, why don't you do the honors? Um, you, <sighs> we're playing Arkham Horror, the card game. But what exactly mm -hmm. is this game about? And 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 what kind of game is it? Sure, so if you're familiar with the Arkham Files or the Cthulhu Mythos, uh, basically it's that. So a bunch of intrepid investigators who are regular, normal day people 
uh, trying to solve mysteries and issues involving the uh, Arkham Mythos. Uh, the big thing about this game is, unlike a lot of the other Mythos games, you build your own deck before you start the game. So you choose what supplies you're bringing, uh, what weapons you're bringing, what tactics and stuff like that. Um, and so each investigator has deck building rules, so you build their deck differently. Um, and then you team up with people, or you can play it solo, and you try to go through a campaign, which is usually uh, eight scenarios. So, And there's a, wow. a narrative along the way, and you get to... If you earn XP, you get to upgrade cards in your deck. There's only cards you can take if you get a certain amount of XP. So it's got a big role-playing element to it, too. That's really cool. I'm really excited. We have uh, we dabbled in figuring out how this game works, and it just wet my appetite. Now, we don't just play board games here, as we've implied. If you've watched the show, you know this. And um, uh, But we, we also role-play the action at the table. I don't wear this wig just because. Um, I wear the wig because my character... I'm going to be tonight as Daisy Walker, and she has luxurious, wavy blonde hair. So, so must I. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's a lot of fun for us. We we get really into the uh, role play aspect of of, of these uh, really narrative and story focused games. So we're really excited about it. And um, I have to say, it would probably not be uh, presumptuous of me to say, Oz, that that um the uh the this universe of arkham horror and and everything is probably one of a, a favorite of ours here on once upon a tabletop isn't it <laughs> yeah i mean it's just it's so easy to it's so easy to do you it's know? so perfect for what we do um and uh yeah. we have a ton of fun doing we've played plenty of mansions of madness and um, so, anyway, why don't we uh why don't we stop stalling and get get to it? What do you guys say? Yes. Sounds great. All right, so um, I'm going to switch this over here, and we're going to take a look at the game itself. Um, Oz, tell everybody what exactly, uh, elaborate a little bit on what you were making mention of earlier uh, with the ah. stream boss and spinning the wheel, the once upon a wheel, while I get one more thing in order over here. Right, so the Once Upon a Wheel has a bunch of different uh, possibilities on it, good or bad. And uh, whenever the stream boss is defeated, so cheering, subscribing, donating, or following our channel, uh, we'll defeat the stream boss slowly. When the stream boss is defeated, we pop up the wheel, spin it, and something will occur of the st wh whatever it lands on. You get to decide who to inflict that on. Um, if you are the stream boss. It's a fun little way for you to uh, interact and break our game and make us really, really want to never do this again. <laughs> oh, who are you kidding? It's why I show we up. We love I, it! <laughs> I'm a, I am, however, might be described as a, as a masochist. Uh, but, um, but yeah, so, so as I said, it'll pop up on the screen every so often. It's, um, uh, bits uh, are one for one damage hit points and everything when you cheer there it is right there follow is five hit points a subscription will do a three a whopping 300 hit points of damage so if you've never subscribed to the channel or if you're resubscribing or any kind of subscription you're going to do a whopping amount of damage to the stream boss um right there palmer just showed another 100 hit points got knocked off the stream boss because he uh cheered with 100 bits thank you palmer and then uh, following if you haven't followed that does a little bit of damage as well so any any kind of stuff like that will help us out and 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 if you land the killing blow like i said then you become the stream boss and you get to uh decide who who um who 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 has to suffer or or not um reap the benefit yeah there's tips down there as well you can donate with uh with like paypal or a, or a card um anyway enough about money and more about this game so this is the setup uh let's let's get started here um a, with a basic like understanding of of how a turn goes so we want we don't want people to go in completely lost so let's let's mm -hmm. just do a quick rundown of how does how does one of our turns look scott where do we start and what do we do sure so on every turn except for the first we do the mythos phase which is these cards up here. There's an agenda on the left side, act on the other side. We're trying to advance the act with clues, uh, and the bad guys are advancing the agenda with doom. And that's basically the clock in the game, and we're racing them. Uh, each turn, we have our little persons down here on our map. Um, we can do three actions per turn. Those actions can be gain a resource, draw a card, move, 
investigate, fight, basically anything you you think you'd need to do to uh, to get your stuff done. Uh, once that's done, uh, we go on to the enemy phase. If there's any enemies out, they could smack us, uh, and then we go into the refresh phase, where anything in our that is exhausted becomes unexhausted. Uh, we gain a card and a resource. Basically, everything gets reset. And then we go right back to the Mythos phase where they get another Doom. Then we go to the Investigator phase. We do everything we have to do. So, And sometimes it'll be vague on what we have to do. So we have to go to different you know, buildings on this map and figure out what we have to do. Right. Gotcha. Yep, and we'll uh, we'll we'll you'll get to see it all in action as we play. Uh, you want to introduce our characters real fast before we uh, before we jump in? Yes. That's mm -hmm. uh, that's why we're here. I'll start with uh, Daisy. Does my is there a written description of my of Daisy on the uh, back here? Yeah, at yeah. The bottom there. Why don't I just read that and give you guys, it, 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 beca in case my amazing cosplay doesn't tell the whole story and doesn't give you everything you need to know. <laughs> um, Daisy Walker. As a respected librarian at Miskatonic University, Daisy had always felt that books were the most important thing in her life. She explored in fiction what she abhorred in life. Horror, violence, fear. Then she stumbled across the John D. translation of the Necronomicon. Ooh, it was blasphemous, unholy, and too awful to read. But given her studies in obscure and occult subjects, Daisy knew there was more truth than fiction within the book's pages. She began to wonder what other secrets the restricted restricted collection of the Orn Library held. Curious she is. Hmm. Orn Library, you say? I I the card said it, not me. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Orn Library? Okay. I thought it was Miskatonic Library. But the Miskatonic, that's part of Miskatonic University. University. Orn Library is in Miskatonic University. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Correct. What about, right. um, what about you, Oz? All right. Hello, darlings. I'm Jenny Bonds. Uh, I am a dilettante. Uh, my backstory? Jenny Bonds has spent the majority of her young life in pursuit of creature comforts, fine dining, and the latest fashions. That all changed when she received a letter from her sister, Isabel. In this letter, Isabel conf uh, confessed that mysterious forces were aligning against her and that she feared she may fall victim to some paranormal threat. It was the last letter Jenny received from her beloved sister. Jenny has since returned to the States to track down and investigate all occult occurrences she can find. Hardly a wilting flower, she has proven herself a crack shot, as well as a fearless and clever investigator of the unknown. Until Isabella's disappearance is explained, Jenny will never relent in her search. Excellent. And finally, Scott. Uh, I am Leo Anderson. And for those who are slagging at my cosplay, he's pretty much a slightly bearded guy in a collared shirt <laughs> with his hair pushed <laughs> to the side. I actually grew this for this stream. I started two weeks ago, so don't blame me. Um, so <laughs> Leo Anderson has spent his whole life getting into the deadliest and most obscure corners of the globe. Along the way, he's lost good people. He's often questioned whether such academic pursuits have been worth the lives lost. His most recent expedition, an ill-fated voyage to Nan Modell, to recover Os Olosva's almanac, ended in complete disaster. Perfect. Mitch was the only one. Thank you. Mitch was the only one of his people to survive, or at very least to remain human. Leo was sick of burying people who trusted him, but now he knows these expeditions aren't purely academic in nature and he won't quit until the job is done. Hell yeah. <laughs> We're all very determined investigators. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. Um, while we were uh, going through that explanation, uh, we got a couple of, I wanted to just make sure that we give a shout out to Palmer, Scrim, uh, Isler 105. Uh, thanks guys for the, for the cheers. That's we have amazing. already, we're down to how many, like 340 hit points. It's hard to read down there, but. Um, so yeah, we're, uh, kill it. So kill it, <laughs> kill it. Clearly, Scott, they want you to suffer. <laughs> um, well, I'm used to it in this game, so. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, th I think it's par for the course with any game um, in the Arkhamverse. So. <laughs> Fair enough. 
Um, all right, so let's get started. Who who do we go? We, we have to choose. One of the things we have to do is choose a lead investigator because the lead investigator kind of like makes final decisions and final say on mm -hmm. any any like group decisions that have to be made, right? So who's going to be the yep. lead investigator? I think it. I think we decided that Scott, you would not be because you you I, you intimately know how all of this I is do. supposed to go. <laughs> there's a, yeah, there's a few decisions that I don't want to make because I know outcomes. So right, right. So I vote well, for you. Off. I wrote for you. Vote for you, Oz. I vote for myself as well. <laughs> you are a built on. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> what do we got? So um, Man, Cypher Ace. Cypher Ace. With uh, 250, then 250, that is right. We've already got a stream boss. Thank you, Cypher Ace, for killing hey. it. So we're going to go ahead spin and spin the, the wheel. wheel before, even before we get started. Mm. The Photogen, Cthulhu Photogen wheel. <laughs> that is not dead, which can eternal lie. And with strange aeons, even death may die. That was, Fucking cultists. That was, that was deep. <laughs> Total deep. Yeah. All right, so whenever you're ready, go ahead and spin that wheel for me. Yeah, Oz. it's a, it's a deep one. Oh wait, no. You know what? We're using this new. <laughs> I, I see what you did there. We're using this new cool thing here. I can actually spin the wheel probably more easily than you can, maybe. <laughs> Let's see who gets to it first. How about that? Yeah, I thought I thought you could do it, so that's why I closed my my thing. I can, I can I can. Don't worry, guys. This is a. We know exactly what we're doing here on Once Upon a Tabletop. So if you'll, um, we, this is all <laughs> scripted. If you could see our script right now, it is fumble. It says next, <laughs> fumble around and make fumble, people ad lib. Think. Yeah, ad lib fumble. <laughs> all right, I'm ready to spin the wheel. <laughs> oh, right when I got there. Okay, go ahead and spin. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? No whammies. <laughs> that is not dead, which can eternal You die. won, minus one health. Excellent. So somebody gets to start with minus one health, and Cypher Ace gets to decide who's that going to be. Uh, Cypher Ace, whenever you decide which one of the three of us is going to have minus one health, let us know in the chat, and we'll go ahead and and make that happen. But in the meantime, what why don't we why don't we again let Scott uh, introduce the scenario to us? So as you said, these are all uh, sort of like like scenarios that are laid out and we're playing through a story so why don't you mm -hmm. do that for us sure so with the uh with every scenario comes kind of a um story bits that you read uh so the best way i think is for me to read the prologue to this whole campaign which Absolutely. is playing the first scenario so dr henry armitage pours himself a glass of pinot and sits down at his desk gesturing for you to come sit across from him I apologize for the short notice he begins. His face is pale, his forehead sweaty and wrinkled with worry. Armitage, the lead librarian of the Miskatonic University, and a former mentor of yours privately contacted you in the hopes of gaining your assistance. Eager to help, you make your way to his home in Southside. Upon entering, you were surprised to find his home in disarray. Books and notes litter his desk, and an empty bottle of wine is tipped over on the ground by the fireplace. You've always known Armitage to be a neat and well-organized man. The elevating man takes a moment to collect his thoughts. I'm looking for two of my colleagues, Dr. Francis Morgan, Professor of Archaeology, and Dr. and Warren Rice, Professor of Languages. Warren was supposed to meet with me over supper earlier today and discuss several important findings, but he has since gone missing. At first I thought nothing of it, but I have a nagging feeling something else is going on. A very familiar feeling. You've never seen Dr. Armitage quite this worried before. His hands tremble as he reaches for the glass on his desk and it he sips from it nervously. I tried to find Francis, hoping he knew where Warren was, but he was too out of touch. Francis has been spending a lot of time in some gambling den, or so I'm told. I sent for you because I'm worried that Warren may be in trouble. I would appreciate it greatly if you could find him for me. You may also wish to ask Francis for help if you can reach him. Now at this point, we would have the investigators must decide, uh, although we've kind of previously decided. but. Uh, you would choose between Professor Warren Rice was last seen working at night in the Humanities Department of Miskatonic University. Let's search from there. Or Dr. Francis Morgan was last seen gambling at the Clover Club, an upscale speakeasy of, and gambling joint located downtown. And so where have we decided to go? We've decided to go after Professor Warren Rice because he was last seen working late at night in the Humanities Department of Miskatonic mm -hmm. University. Well, I'm very familiar with... Uh the humanities department being a librarian at the university mm -hmm. so yes you must know armitage quite well 
uh, uh, we, we get along well. Yes. I've Good. never seen him quite this worried before, though. Yes, I know that was a hor terrible waste of wine. Frightful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I always uh, knew it was quite neat and tidy. Can't believe his place is all upset like that. Well, I, I say, I say, we go ahead and go and check out. Um, I'll, I'll give you a tour of the university on the way. All right. So Excellent. where, where do we, uh, where do we head first? So Jenny's starting with minus one health. Um, yeah. I'm going to say that she, uh, she uh, probably maybe cut herself on the uh, on the broken glass. <laughs> yeah, she was trying to <laughs> lap it up. <laughs> yeah, she was trying to pick it up, and yeah. goodness, it's just I hate seeing spilt alcohol. She can handle <laughs> it. She's got an, a health of eight. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm quite a tough cookie. So, all right. All right, so... so we should probably start, draw our... Or gather our supplies. That's right. Step number one. Step number one, we have to set set the stage, so to speak, right? Do we do this... We, we all do this separately, and we draw yep. five cards from our deck, if I remember correctly, which Correct. is this yep. right mm -hmm. here. If you just hover over at the number five, you'll draw five cards. Right, and I will take a look at mine. Now, for those of you playing, we've learned quite a bit about this game already strategy-wise, because this, this game can be pretty deep strategy-wise. And if you want to learn more about the strategy, you should check out the Mythos Busters podcast. But um, <laughs> uh, Scott told us that, and if I remember this correctly, uh, a good a good thing for for your your first draw is to because because you draw five and then you can mulligan up to your entire deck for another another draw right up to your entire hand yeah so you That's can right, choose whatever cards you deck. don't want yeah <laughs> yeah so um and you uh, said that it's a good idea to look for for assets for things for items to start with yeah. right correct yeah Ooh, i started with four assets so let's dump this one you can just put it to the side somewhere yep Right there, Oz. Is this the discard up here or no? Uh, discard's down here. Yep. Okay. Because you're going to be shuffling these cards back in once you're done mulliganing. Okay. Right. I drew the exact same card. <laughs> As you do. That's yeah. Yeah. So now one thing about this game too, and you guys want to keep this secret, which I think is super themey. Um, within your own deck, there are also negative cards. Um, so people who are avid fans of card games always think, hey, card draw is always good, right? It gets you more things, but you have two bad cards in your deck and you don't know when they're going to come up. Uh, and they can be absolutely backbreaking. So we're going to shuffle those in in a minute. Right. All right, okay. so I am done. So should I go ahead right. and put my cards back in my, in my deck and shuffle? Yep. Throw them right back on there, and then grab this card as well. Just make one big pile. All right. And then if you just hold down on the deck, it'll lift up off the table, and you can just shake it. Shake, shake, shake. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pro tip, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Great shuffling. Yeah. Great shuffling. Yep, yep, yep. So, uh, so yeah. So, I'm excited already. I've got uh, some good, some good things here. All right. All right, time to find Warren Rice. So we're all starting here in the quad. Mm -hmm. every, every university has a quad. And um, where I went to school, that was where all the frat kids hung out. Um, mm. I don't know if it's the same at Miskatonic or not. It might be. Maybe our lead investigator would like to read what's sure. going currently on in the quad. Yeah. A too early winter has stripped the trees bare. Their dead branches whistle as a sharp, cold wind cuts across the empty quad. So, um, so our goal, mm -hmm. my understanding here is, uh, we need seven clues. Am I reading this correctly? Nope. So this Why is the bad guys. So, um, um I'll read this really quick. Seven. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you've arrived at the Miskatonic University campus in search of the Professor Warren Rice. Classes are over, and a mysterious silence hangs over the air of the quad. Professor Rice was last seen several hours 
ago by one of Armitage's students in the Humanities Building. So seven is how much doom has to go on before the enemies advance. Yes, it's a three card deck and there's things on the back. And when they advance it, we read the back and it'll, it'll affect the gameplay. On this side is what we want to do. And you see it's a three with a little guy in a hat mm -hmm. at the bottom. That means three clues per investigator. So we need a total of nine clues. And it could be Daisy has six, uh, Jenny has two, and I have one. It's fine. It doesn't matter who has them. It's just three. We need a total of nine among us. Gotcha. Right. Got it. And so the idea is we want to get through our chapters before before the the mysterious evil gets through there. So. That would be advisable. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so we're now that Go ahead. we're in this location, so it actually flips over. Excellent. And this tells us, um, if I remember correctly, first of all, the, the zero on the right is that there are no clues in the quad, right? Correct. But the, and the three is any test that's made in or on this thing. That's, that's the, what is it called? The, the shroud? The shroud. So yeah. anytime you're investigating a location. Right, okay. Because enemies will have their own difficulty, but that sure. is for finding clues at this location. Okay, okay. Like I said, we're going to spend some time here in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, making sure that we're all clear on the rules and, and we'll uh, get through. So so who's going to go first? Who's going to figure out what we're doing? We're all in the quad now. Oh, it's so cold mm -hmm. out here. Uh, are you, uh, Jenny, uh, you, you are... Uh, you didn't dress for the occasion <laughs> with your blue dress. <laughs> no, I left my stole in the cab. Hmm. Well then, I suppose we, uh, so this, this arrow thing, resign, is that an, that's not an action or anything, right? That, is, isn't, is, that is an action you can take. Uh, resigning means you give up. <laughs> so you would just leave the game. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> sometimes mind. this game goes so upside down, you're just like, you know what? Instead of dying, I just want to run. And that's what resigning <laughs> is. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So, well, Jenny is not going to give up just yet. Uh, surrounded by fences and gates of wrought iron, you can't help but feel as much a prisoner here as a guest. Well then, uh, let's see. So we, looking around, I see a science building, the Orn Library, and the Student Union. Hmm. Uh, let's see, if he was in the Humanities Department, I see the Humanities Building is, oh wait, we could go to any of these. Okay, yep. there's also the Humanities Travel along the lines. All right, well, if he was last seen in the, humani in the Humanities Department, I will go there. So that's a move action. Then my yep. next, oh, we flip it immediately, right? Yeah, so read the, okay. yeah. Professor Rice was last seen in the Humanities Building teaching one of his Latin classes. The murky windows of the weather-worn structure emit no light, and the night is silent around you. Goodness. Quite dark. Oh, oops. All right. Uh, all right, so this has two clues per investigator, so six clues. Uh, forced, at the end of your turn, if you're in the Humanities Building, you have to discard the top X cards of your deck, where X is the amount of horror on you. Okay, Yikes. Luckily, I have no horror. Ooh. That's good. And the power is out, plunging the building's halls into heavy darkness. There is no sign of Professor Rice. So Jenny Barnes is going to search anyway and look for clues as to where Professor Rice may have gone. Else he must he must be somewhere on campus. There must be some kind of clue somewhere. Um so let's see. Um now to remind me, do we start with any mm -hmm. resource? We start with five. Yeah, oh, we did. five. Okay, I've placed them. Yeah, excellent. And that's how we can pay for our, the cards that are in our hands. Correct. Um, apparently there were no depilatories in the twenties. Yes, <laughs> yes. I would have put on makeup to cover all this up, but ugh, it's just I prefer being all natural. I woke up like this. Um, let's see. Uh, if I, I can. Investigating my location means I draw a token. Correct. To and I need to get at or above the shroud. Yep. Which is a three in the humanities yep. building. Yep. And I use my my book. Uh, intellect, yeah. Is that intellect. Yeah, the book. Right. Well my intellect is three, so I should have a good I should have a good ability uh, chance to do it. 
Um, however, one of my nice things here that I'm going to play is I am going to pl uh, play a lantern, which Ooh. takes up a hand, um, and it costs two resources. So my lantern, uh, when I investigate, my location gets minus one shroud for the investigation. Ooh. So, uh, so yeah, so now I only need a two instead of a three. Um, Makes sense. Oh, it's can, dark in yeah, there. And apparently I can also throw the lantern at, a mon at something, at an enemy. I can set them on fire. So that's mm -hmm. nice. And then I'm also going to, uh, as my... I mean, I could investigate now, but I'm, I'd rather set myself up for success. So I'm also going to play this lucky cigarette case, which also Ooh. costs me two resources. And my lucky cigarette. So as I'm as I'm wandering about, uh, I take my took my lucky cigarette case, snap it open, pull out a cigarette, and tap it into my lantern and <laughs> go around. And my lucky cigarette case. After I succeed a skill test by two or more, I can exhaust the cigarette case, so I can tap it basically like in magic to draw a card. Setting yeah. up my engine. Oh yeah, that's uh, I like that because it's like you succeeded and you're like, yeah. I need a cigarette. Yes. Oh. <laughs> quite, Hell yeah. yeah. I'm feeling quite lucky. Yes. It was so <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to investigating. And she looks over her shoulder to see where uh, the other investigators I like the uh, I like the quote on the lucky cigarette case. Read that for us. Ooh, I didn't even see it. Uh, it's not really all that lucky. Just in the mood for a smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Classy. That was... <laughs> all right so that ends my turn mm -hmm. all right well i guess uh daisy will say well it's quite cold out here um i think i'll head into the the library i think i may have um i think i got so something i left something in there that might be uh useful for us maybe to help find the professor i'll i'll be right back well you know this place better than i do so lead the way Certainly. Over there is the student union. Um, and if you head over to there, that uh, big square building right there is the science building. Um, that's where they do the science. And, oh. um, and uh, that scary looking uh, square building over there is the administration building. That's where uh, they, 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 you know. Administer. They administer. <laughs> that's where... <laughs> That's where you know the uh, the I can't think of any of the departments at a, at a university all of a sudden, but they do everything there. And here's the library. So I go to the library. That's one of my actions. You can take three actions, guys. I think we said that mm -hmm. earlier. And um, in the in the Warren Library, three floors of weathered gray granite. The library looks more like a reliquary than a place of learning. Stone gargoyles snarl down from above arched windows and Latin script winds around the double doors at the top of a wide set of stone steps. All right, I guess I flip this over, eh? Yep. Boom. I will take that with me. <laughs> <laughs> if it lands on it, you get to keep it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Orn Library looks like it has three shroud, shroud as well. I mean, it's the nighttime at the university. They don't have any of the lights on. Thank you, uh, thank you, Palmer, for the cheer. Um, for tour guiding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, that's what I do. Um, and also one uh, clue per investigator. That's three clues to be had here. You must spend mm -hmm. an additional action to investigate the Orn Library. So it takes two actions to wow. try and investigate. Mm -hmm. It says, the the Orn Library is a labyrinth of dusty bookshelves and poorly lit halls. So that's why it takes an additional action to do it. Um, now you'll see at the bottom here, it says victory one in the bottom right corner. Yes. When at the end of the game, if this location has no clues on it, we, victory one means we get one experience point. Oh, nice. And that's how you upgrade your deck in between scenarios. Nice, okay. Interesting. Well, I too also should uh, should set myself up for success. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe I believe in in planning for the future. So one of the things that I'm going to do, I happen to get dealt uh, Daisy Walker's signature item, Daisy's tote bag. 
So I am going to, that is not a held item, right? It's just an item over here. Correct. So that is, uh, for those who, who would like to know, um, Daisy Walker has a signature item. It's only in her deck, and it's a, it says, you have two additional hand slots, which can only be used to hold tome, hold tome assets. So it makes it so that I can hold tomes, and Daisy's awesome with tomes. In fact, that works nicely because Daisy's uh, ability makes it so that uh, she gets, um, if she's... She draws an extra card for succeeding things for each tome that she has, mm -hmm. from like investigating and, and other kinds of things. Um, so there's that. Also and I additional actions with tomes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, actually. Yeah, exactly correct. Um, I am going to also... Uh, I think because I'm about to be doing some investigating, I'm gonna... Why not... Why not make it even easier than it already is and use and and pull out Daisy's gonna pull out her search through her tote bag and there happens to be a magnifying glass in there and she's oh it's darker than I'm used to in here. The lights aren't working for some reason, so let me pull out I need to find out if this uh if the the brief or the, the folder I'm looking for in this file cabinet is is the one that I need. Ah pull out my trusty magnifying glass. And she um she pulls it out and starts looking. That's going to so give Daisy, me a plus one intellect while investigating. Daisy is so good with this magnifying glass because it says fast on it. It doesn't take an action to play. You right. just have to pay for it. Right. Oh, I do have to pay for it. That's a thing that I have to do. Yes. But but to equip it, um, that took an action, right? Nope. Oh, because so, it says fast. Oh. It means you can just you play it. It doesn't cost an action. She's so good. She just whipped it out. She knew exactly where it was. Whoosh. <laughs> yep, exactly. All right, but uh, Scott is going to remind me the whole game to uh, <laughs> to pay for things because as we learned during our practice game, I like to get away with things for free. So it took two, <laughs> it costs two for Daisy's dope bag and one for the magnifying glass. So that means I should have two left is all. Two resources left. There we go. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I still get to do something, but I can't investigate because in the library you need two to investigate. So why don't yeah. I uh, go ahead and pull, uh, grab one? I, I pulled out my magnifying glass. Oh, I think this uh, this old book of lore would be useful. She finds a book on her shelf, and she said, "I think this will be really useful." And she grabs it off the shelf and puts it in her tote bag. Hmm. Um, too, too oh, I can't do that. Dang it! That. Dang it! <laughs> Pretend you didn't see that. Um, uh, cost are, you too an, much. are you an accountant in real life? <laughs> no, that, I'm the that, that would be I awesome. hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, uh, what? let's see, what else can I do <laughs> instead? Um, I could... Investigate. Well, I can't investigate in the library. I need two. Oh, right, because it's two actions. Uh, but I can... Um, what do you call it? There's that one thing I can do. Can't I? Can't I get another resource? Resource? Yep. Yeah. You can get a resource to draw a card. That's just one little ticky thing. Yep. Yeah. So I will. Um, I think I'll I'll get a resource. Will I, I'll draw a, car, a card at the beginning of the next turn anyway, right? You'll draw a card and get a resource. Yeah, at the end of each turn. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get it. Go ahead and get a resource in, and I'll, it'll set me up well for next time. All right. All right. So I am done. Howard just said the stream boss was defeated. Um, it looks like it. What does it say? It is Stone Stoll's Stoll's book Brook. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, the name well, of the person. My uh, yeah, my eyes are failing, failing me. Um, but it is uh, yeah. Thank you very much. I need to switch around my uh, view here with this new OB Streamlabs OBS <laughs> to make it so it's easier for me to read stuff. Um, so it's on there. Uh, let's spin it. Spin the wheel. Thank you so much. We have another wheel spin. Spin the wheel, make a deal. You make a deal with a minus one, one sanity. So we've gotten Ooh. minus one health and now minus one sanity. <laughs> and because our stream boss is Stokes book <laughs> so, oh a stokes book there you go oh boy yeah. so stokes book gets to decide 
Um, whether Scott gets minus one sanity or not is what it sounds like to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly where this is going. Um, while we're waiting for a, I pick Scott. That's right. It's it it's a yeah yeah. <laughs> if yeah. it's bad, always Scott is what, is what Stokes. Well, welcome to the stream, though, Stokes. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much for coming and hanging out with us. Um, Hi, Stokes. Yeah. Uh, so okay, that means it's Scott's turn anyway. So uh, go right. ahead and get rid of a sanity and um, sure did get going. <laughs> so uh, Leo's kind of looking at these ah darn youngins. They're running rampity scamp around the campus. Um, so Leo's special Damn ability. <laughs> Damn. Nineteen hundred olds. Centarians. Yeah, sure. Centurions. Centurions. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah. um, so his special ability is after my turn begins, I can play an ally from my hand, reducing its cost by one, and it doesn't cost me an action. So Leo looks over and he sees uh, one of the a beat cops standing around. The like, copper on me. And the, the cop sees Leo and he seems like a pretty serious gentleman. He figures, oh, I should probably probably follow him. And uh, Leo looks around, and the admin building looks at Minnie. <laughs> and he doesn't like the young kids, so the student union is out. Um, he decides, you know, he's an old science guy. He knows all the elements, you know, earth, fire, wind, water. And uh, decides to <laughs> walk on over to the science building. The science building dominates the eastern side of the campus. Its windows are dark, save for a lone window shining faintly in the corner of the basement. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, a trail of vicious, viscous ooze snakes through the halls of the science building's first floor, leading down to the basement. Uh, after science building is revealed, put the set aside alchemy labs into play, and forced when you fail a willpower test in the science building, take a damage. It's two shroud and one clue per location, or per investigator. So that is the. Alchemical labs, they pop into play. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Just gonna. I made these bigger. Do that. And we'll draw a line so that we know it's connected. However, I'll look at the alchemical labs. The door leading to the alchemical labs is locked. You cannot move to the alchemical labs. A pungent stench <laughs> rises from the laboratory downstairs. The signs of the hall is broken by the unmistakable hiss of a burner. Ooh. So this location is in play, but we are not allowed to go to it. Okay. Spooky. Ooh. All right. All right. So that was my first action. Um, Leo kind of looks around. Hmm. Not much to do around here, I guess. I want to follow this ooze. I think Leo is going to investigate. So, in order to investigate, uh, it is a two shroud. I have three intellect, and I draw from this chaos bag, which has a bunch of numbers and different face tokens. It'll tell us if I pass or not. So, a skull. So, if it's a picture, we go to this card here. And it's a minus one, so if I fail, I discard the top three cards of my deck. However, uh, minus one to my skill, I'm at a two. The shroud is two, so I succeed. Huzzah! Like, Leo scoops some ooze into his hand. It's like, this stuff is gross. I should probably look for more. <laughs> um, Does he taste it? That's what detectives do. <laughs> <laughs> he, he sniffs it. It tastes like murder. <laughs> Tastes like stuff I don't want to deal with. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll just... Uh, Leo's going to scoop some more into his hand, or try to at least. Ah, zero. So I pass again. He now has two hands full of slime. And he's, he's trying to shove it at the cop's face and be like, Look at this, copper. It's important. And the cop's like, oh, jeez. Old man. God. All right. <laughs> So what? that's the end of the that's the end of the investigator phase. I just I just love the the image in my head the idea that he scooped up one, and he gen then decided. I'm not sure I what this is. This. Maybe I need to scoop up more. 
<laughs> Why can't I hold all this ooze? <laughs> I'm inspired by the science building. He decides to test what happens when you hold it in both hands. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what science does. <laughs> uh, Test that hypothesis. Yeah. So that's it for us. That's the investigator phase. So now we move to the enemy phase. Uh -oh. um, if there if there were enemies that had hunter on them, they would try to move towards the nearest investigator uh, and fight us. But there's no enemies in phase in play, so we're all good. Uh, after they would hunt, they would try that to then attack us. Uh, and there's no test to save from the attack. They just punch you right in the face and you did, you deal with it. Um, upkeep phase is where we reset anything. So anything that's exhausted, which, you know, like your lucky cigarette case, Oz, if it was, mm -hmm. you unexhausted. And then we each draw a card and gain a resource. Okay. All right. Now, I'm Jenny Barnes, and uh, during upkeep phases, I collect one additional resource. I you do. Trust you, fund. Mm -hmm, you get two per... What a so spoiled once... brat. I'm stinking rich. <laughs> <laughs> if you draw a card that is a weakness, it'll say basic weakness or weakness. You have to immediately reveal it or do what it says, by the way. Um, now we check our hand size. Uh, we can have eight cards in hand. If we have more, we have to discard, but I think we're all good. And that's the end of the turn. All right. So we're back so... to back. Now, uh, to, to, to clarify, we don't, there's no particular order that we have to go in, right? It's just one one of us goes whenever we want to go. Nick Morgan mm -hmm. dropping the cheers right there. Thank you, buddy. Um, did a whopping amount of damage to the stream boss there. We're down to uh, 250. Um, but yeah, we can go in any order. We just have to, like, each of us <laughs> has to take all of our actions all at once, correct? Correct, yeah. So it, it could be Oz first, then you, then me. But we have to take all three of our actions, but we can choose any order. I like that Nick is only here to see what Scrim's husband looks like. That's, uh, uh, let's be honest, <laughs> that's the only reason we invited him. Um, <laughs> it was just a coincidence Not he happened crazy. to be really knowledgeable about this game. Um, <laughs> Sleeping my way on up the, the <laughs> ladder, I guess. <laughs> one, one step at a time. Um, yeah. All right, so I guess uh, Jenny Barnes... We'll, uh, we'll... Oh! Hmm? Well, sorry, so are we moving on? Is it next turn? Are we? Yes, I, I think. Was that the only thing that's left? Nope. So, well, now we start the turn. Oh. Uh, oh, right. There's oh, right. a mythos so, phase. Yes, so this is the first mythos phase. Basically, you skip the first mythos phase, first turn of the game, because it would just be unfair and cruel and horrible. So that's where we go over to, uh, these cards at the top, the act and the agenda. We take one of these Doom Tokens, and we put it on this card. And I usually put them up here, just so it's easy to see. So that's one of seven Doom. And when we put that Doom on there, we check and see, do we have seven Doom in play? There might be five up here, and maybe sometimes enemies get them oh, down there. Okay. So when we hit seven, this flips over. But only at this point. Right, okay. So, so we, can, we can accrue seven later on in, in the phase... But yes. no, it doesn't happen until the beginning of the next turn. Correct. Okay. Okay. So that happens. Now we draw our Mythos cards, and this is where you're going to get uh, enemies and stuff like that. So this is Lead Investigator uh, goes first, and then we go clockwise around the table. All right. Okay. Well, before we, we do the Mythos phase, uh, Istal Girl over the Burr 05. Um, I'm sure that's how you pronounce it, right? Uh, <laughs> Probably. Uh, just this became the stream time. boss, man, guys. What'd you say? Is yeah, is I think it's love. killing it. I think, is it LST or IST? I'm saying it's is is is, is to girl. <laughs> is to girl. Oh, I think it's lost girl. Oh five. But anyway, hey, whatever. So that means that we've got a new stream boss. Let's spin that wheel, darling. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna die from the wheel. <laughs> I know. Yes. Really. More horror or more sanity damage. Um, <laughs> so go ahead and spin the wheel. We'll get to, you get to decide who gets this fun thing inflicted upon them. Cthulhu Fatagan. You want madness monologue. <laughs> ah, good. You get to select one of the characters to have um, to have a, an, in, an inside monologue 
about their fears and insecurities and mad- an onset of madness. It's still a little early, so I don't. But I you know what? What kind of madness quite yet? But but you know what kind of what kind of baggage does one of us come to this to this uh, this investigation with? You know, like. So we'll let you pick somebody while we move on to the next step in the mythos phase, and once you decide, we'll we'll come back to that. All so right. we decided Oz correctly as a lead. Yes. Yes. So Oz, if you just want to click right here on your player mat where it says Encounter, down on your mat, right by your deck. Yes. Right where it says Encounter there. Okay. Okay. Ooh, ooh, uh, uh, I lost my. Uh, eh. <laughs> right. Okay. Right there. Right. There. Uh, click the top half which says encounter gotcha. okay so then this card comes out and so when these cards come out revelation you do what revelation says basically. okay so test that's will right yeah okay test will two increase the skill test difficulty by one for each damage on me oh look i already started with the damage the wheel screwed you i know <laughs> uh so now i need now it needs to be a will three if i mm-hmm. fail i take two horror if they can catch that the fleeing soul when it leaves the body, they instantly flutter away, chittering in demonic laughter. From HP Lovecraft's The Dumbwitch Horror. Okay. Um, so let's test. Uh, testing is... So one thing you can do is with your cards in your hand, because you're testing it even right now, right? You have three will, and you're testing against three. Yes. Um, if you have any cards with willpower just below the price uh, yeah. there... You can mm-hmm. chuck those cards to the test to try and help yourself. Um, I obviously don't. don't. All right. Well, anyone, <laughs> anyone at your location could also help you, but we've all split up. Splitting the party in an Arkham yeah. game is a bad idea, and we did it all. So uh, we, we are yeah, all we're... seasoned RPGers, and we did it anyway. <laughs> Let's spread out as much as we can. <laughs> you go that way. I'll go this way. Who cares if all the lights are off? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, to test, you just hit this ca- just below the encounter one. Got That's it. chaos. Ah, a minus one, the note. But uh, let me see, do I get any other? No, no, mm-hmm. nope, nope. I failed. You're taking two, two horror, horror you, and you know what? Um, uh, Lust Girl, which is what I'm deciding it says. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I apologize sincerely. Uh, has decided that uh, Oz, you get to have a madness monologue. So why don't you? This is appropriate. You're taking two horror. It's time for you to monologue the madness you're experiencing right now. Excellent. Uh, so the there's something there's something scary. I don't know if I've ever felt something like this before, but looking for my sister, Isabel, it's taken a toll on the inside, and I do my best to hide it with this facade of a dilettante socialite, but something draws me towards the the abyss. Something draws me towards the unknown, and I just wish that I, I hope that I won't toss myself asunder before I can save my sister. That I don't dip too far into the darkness, into the void, into the madness, before I can accomplish it. But I don't exactly trust myself. Monologue. Right. Scene. <laughs> All right. Excellent. If I can't trust myself, who can I trust? <laughs> Nobody. No. Nope. Um, <laughs> Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Everyone's horrible. All right. I'll go ahead and do my encounter, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, for the mythos, because there's no order to this as well. I'm assuming. Uh, it's it's from the lead investigator and then clockwise. Oh well, then it's me yeah. anyway. It is. Yep. All right. Encounter. I got. Uh, okay. Off- Sorry, I have to interrupt because this, this is important. Okay. Huh. See how it says peril? Yes. So that means that you have to read this. You cannot ask us questions. We cannot comment on this card. You have to make this decision all by yourself, and we cannot influence you at all. Oh, dear Lord. So you can read it out loud, but Oz and I just have to stay quiet, Not, and you can't ask us questions. You can look at what's in our board, like our board state, right. but... Because I'm, I'm in peril you. right now. Yes, you are... 
It's all you. Because uh, there's an offer of power. Okay. A voice inside your head offers you power for a price. It says it's a revelation. You must either choose one. So I have to draw two cards and place two doom on the current agenda. Uh, this effect can cause the current agenda to advance. Or take two horror. Oh, wow. So, so the question is, do I... Oh, do I screw over everyone or myself? The Necronomicon. <laughs> Necronomicon calls for you. Oh, jeez. Come fetch me from the restricted section. No, I, uh... I can offer... The adult only section. I've, I've seen it before, and I put it away on the shelf somewhere and hoping I wouldn't find it again, but now that I'm looking, I, I feel it, I hear it. Um, I am going to... It seems early, but I've got, I think I can take it. So I'm going to take two, I'm going to take two horror. So I, I, gi right. I give in to, I try to resist the horrors the way that I'm interpreting this. I'm going to say, no, yeah. no, I, I can't. This, there were dark whispers coming from that book. I will not give in. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and I hold up my satchel in front of my face and I <laughs> push it away <sighs> taking two horror alright one just disappears two. into the echoey library <laughs> halls I'm sweating and trembling now yeah and I go back to my search alright ooh okay so I got beyond the veil and here's another keyword surge what surge means is I draw this I do everything it says, and then I draw another encounter card. Oh gosh. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah. So, so revelation. Put Beyond the Veil into play in your threat area if there's no copy of Beyond the Veil in your threat area. So you can only have one. Forced. If your deck has no cards in it, take ten damage to Holy discard shit. Beyond the Veil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank goodness you drew it now. <laughs> <laughs> in all of his experience, Leo has been accumulating mental trauma behind the uh, veneer of expertise. But at some point, that uh, that mental trauma is going to come and hit him physically somehow, something. Wow. All right, my second card. Thanks, Palmer, for the sheer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so this is our first enemy, the Whippoorwill. So when you draw enemies, they spawn in front of you, like you get them. Now, the, the Whippoorwill is a bit different because he has the keyword aloof. And what that means is he actually starts on the board, not engage with me. I have to actively engage him. So he's at my location here. Yep. If I want to fight him, I have to spend an action to actually engage him, and then I can fight him. That's what uh, aloof means. But hunter he's also, means he... Yeah, he's also a hunter, so he will start hunting people down. Right, but he'll just sit there in the background being annoying. So what he does is each investigator at Whippoorwill's location gets minus one to all their stats. Ah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, see the 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 art. It's like it's like sucking your your yeah being your your soul, your the, essence, everything. These are the birds on uh, Oz's card. Oh. The eager for death. Yeah. So it says it is Val that the birds are psychopomps. Lying in wait for the souls of the die. HP Lovecraft, done with horror. So oh, was like, right, ah, right. Birds, Oz's card here. was talking about things that will, uh, will suck you know, their soul. Suck souls if they can capture a soul mm -hmm. uh, that's leaving a body or something like that. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right. Is that um? Is that our mythos phase? That is the mythos phase. Okay. So now, now we can take our turn. Daisy's frantically gone back to taking care of whatever business she needs to take care of in the library. She's she's suddenly not comfortable there anymore because of these whispers that have been speaking to her, and she's she uh, she she wants to take care of what she needs to take care of and and get out of there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, might as well go ahead and and do that. Pay for this. I'm gonna pay Scott. I'm oh, gonna, okay, good. good. <laughs> I'm gonna pay <laughs> for this uh, old book of lore, um, which is a. Uh, let me go before I still forget. Anyway, let me go ahead and pay for it. 
<laughs> um, the uh, it's uh, it's an item that I can exhaust, mm -hmm. and if I do, I choose an investigator at my same location, and that investigator gets to search the top three cards of their deck for a card, draw it, and shuffle the rest back into their deck. So you get Ooh. to kind of filter your deck. Um, I get, can I use that on myself, or does it have to be someone else? You are investigator at your location. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, and the one thing about this too, see the little words item and tome? Mm -hmm. Daisy references tomes. So that's how you right. know if it's a tome or not, is Correct. The, the traits. Yeah. Right, and that's why I put it over here, mm -hmm. um, because it's a, it's a tome. And one thing to note about, for those watching, Daisy has an ability that says I can take an additional action during my turn on tome um, abilities, but they have to be the ones with the arrows, right? Yeah, which this one has. So. Yeah. So All you right. basically can do this one for free. Every turn, as long as I have yeah. this tome, yeah. Um, so that was one of my turns. The other turn I'm going to do is go ahead... Let me go ahead and use the b old book of lore before I take my next action, because who knows what I'll get. So I'm going to draw three cards here. Mm -hmm. um, Daisy hiding in her books. Yeah. And uh, I think I know exactly what I'm going to... Uh, heap and it's going to be I looked through the tome and um, suddenly as I'm looking through the tome uh, it's for for answers and clues well I get to, I just am keeping this card never mind never mind I'm keeping this yep. card you're not going to know what it is yet I was about to I was about to play another card without paying for it um <laughs> <laughs> As you do. Yep, yep. That's uh that's my other secret ability. Um the uh so I did that and so now I still have two two turns. So I'll investigate. That's what I'm here mm -hmm. to do. I'll investigate because yeah. it takes two turns to investigate in the library. I've got two left, two actions left. Great plan. Um pulling out my magnifying glass, going in the other direction from that which I heard the the terrifying voice. Um, and start investigating. And I get a plus one on that while I do it, which gives me a six intellect. Um, and the... Jesus. Yep. The shroud is three. Shroud is three. So I am super happy with that. I'm going to Ooh. click on my... It's the chaos button, right? Chaos, yep. yep. Chaos button. And of course, okay. I <laughs> so get this... the auto fail one. <laughs> so whenever you draw this, just for future reference, it knocks down your skill value to zero. Right. And you fail. Even if you were to pass on a zero, it still makes you automatically fail. Because there's some cards that say, if you, you know, test this, take a damage for each point you fail by, this makes you, like, you're testing at zero. Uh, it's the worst thing in the bag. Well, it seems that whatever voice <laughs> was speaking to me, I went, I went in the other direction. It was none too pleased with me, so it sent out a shadowy tendril that, that wrapped itself around my face and, and choked the air out of me and I broke away <laughs> further but it, it totally uh, got in the way of me you know getting anything mm -hmm. done this turn so I flee to the other side of the library oh, my hair flies in my face oh. books protect me yes please oh, no alright that's my turn <laughs> <laughs> alright uh, Jenny Barnes looking around the humanities department, look, uh, is searching for Professor Rice's uh, Latin class, and so she's looking at the at the board, uh, the different boards uh, where all of the different departments and, and all the classrooms are, the map, uh, and so she's going to do an investigation. Uh, and she has her lantern, so she pulls up her lantern, looking at trying to read in the in the dark. Um, so I have minus one shroud at this location. So that's a two. I'm at, uh, I have three and it is at two. So let's do this. Minus Oof. four. <laughs> There's well, one of those That's in the bag. a thing? <laughs> Jesus. That's as low as it goes. There's one of oh. them out of 15, so. Oh. Goodness, why is reading so hard? I don't understand. It's, I don't, I don't understand this lingo that these, that these students are using. 
these days. Uh, well, uh, so she's uh, she's going to stumble down the hallway and just find it her damn self. And she's going to investigate again. Click it again. A minus two. So just... <laughs> You know what the There's best part about fail. the best part about these tokens is that you you know you can't even take solace in the fact that like oh well we got the minus four out of the way nope it goes right back no. into the bag mm -hmm. <laughs> yes yes uh, well then um, hmm she's uh, she's getting lost she feels like she's maybe taken taking a wrong turn now let me see hold on oh goodness the humanities department is so confusing uh, oh, wait, wait, left right wait oh. oh. These numbers aren't even in sequential order. Who who studies here? Uh, all right, so last <laughs> chance at investigating. <sighs> uh, that's that uh, really bad one again. <laughs> We're the worst investigators ever. Welcome to Arkham Horror LCG, yeah. everyone. Right. It's, uh, it's just uh, so Jenny... cold outside. <laughs> Jenny, uh, Jenny opens, uh, uh, unwittingly opens a, a closet door and uh, enters, and uh, the, the light just kind of snuffs out momentarily in her lantern, and uh, she walks in, and, the, and that gust just locks her into the, <laughs> into the, uh, into the broom closet, and uh, now she's trapped inside. Hello? Hello? Oh dear, I've gotten myself into a pickle. That's my turn. A literal pickle. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I guess it's um, I guess it's Scott's turn. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> Leo hears some yeah. screams of complaining from uh, the other investigators. <laughs> and figures to himself, I guess I'm getting this job done myself. Well, he's holding two fistfuls of slime and ooze, by the yeah. way. Yeah. And uh. <laughs> Uh, hmm. <laughs> Picture this, he's holding it He's holding it and he's like I don't know what they're I don't know what those weirdos are doing <laughs> <laughs> So uh He calls on his uh His good friend Mitch Brown Mitch Come help me So he's using Using my initial reaction thing Uh oh, so Mitch geez, Brown Mitch is his Brown signature card Looks really grizzled <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a uh, sole survivor. <laughs> and Mitch makes it so I have two additional ally slots, which can only be used to hold non-unique allies. Ooh. So I can keep my beat cop and Mitch Brown around at the same time. Nice. So now Leo is uh thinking about how to deal with all this slime, and in the background he hears chirp 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 or whatever sounds Whippoorwills make. He's like that bird's annoying. <laughs> so he starts chasing after the bird for his first action. He's such an old man. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't have a gun, so he's just going to attempt to punch the bird right in its bird neck. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, ah, I told well, you to stop eating my tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> get off my proverbial lawn, bird. <laughs> so... Um. Right now I'm a four. My beat cops gives me plus one, so I'm a five. But the whippoorwill drops it down by one again, so I'm a four to two. So on the on the bad guys, uh, on the left side, the fist is the combat rating or what I have to beat. Uh, the one in the middle is the health, and the four on the right side is what it would take to evade an enemy. And so that's when you test your agility, and if you successfully test that, they get exhausted, they turn sideways, they go back on the location, and they're no longer engaged with you. So they won't hit you during the enemy phase. Mm. And so usually on hmm? with uh, with this creature that's aloof, does that yeah. mean that the effect is also not taking place? Like uh, you've evaded the whippoorwill. Kind of aloof basically means you have to go to them. Usually the enemies come to you. Uh, so, so even if even if it's been evaded, the, mm -hmm. it's still causing the minus one to all stats. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's just a constant effect. So. Uh, all right, so four to two. Let's see how good I am at punching birds. <laughs> Minus one. So Leo Turns out winds up pretty good. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's killed many birds with many stones in his uh, in his day. 
And so uh, attacking does one damage, and the Whippoorwill has one health, so it's dead. Right. Excellent. Uh, so that was his second action. In his third action, he looks down at the slime, just thinks to himself, you know what? It was better than one or two handfuls of slime. <laughs> two handfuls and a mouthful. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should so, find a beaker for those. Oh, uh, here, Mitch, hold one handful of slime here for me. So oh, now Mitch is holding So he's going to pick up another handful of slime, hopefully. And he does. Turns because... out that these are all really useful slime handfuls, though. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, so. He's very happy Mitch with his. probably doesn't think so. <laughs> like, it's exactly these kinds of actions that got us to where we were in the first place. Yeah. Shut up, you grizzled old vet. Oh, wait, that's myself. Ah. We were literally the only survivors of that expedition. <laughs> <laughs> Some survived, they're just not human anymore. Uh, I think it's all of us. So, uh, we go to enemy phase. There's no enemies yet. Uh, and we do upkeep. So any of your things are exhausted. Uh, yeah. Your book of lore. Uh, use Q and E to rotate them. All right. And I draw a card and a resource, right? Uh, yep. At the very least, while I'm trapped in this closet, my trust fund is generating some income. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Right, so. so <laughs> at least while I'm failing here my IRA is collecting uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. alright so we check our hand size we're all good so we go to the mythos phase doom 2 of 7 and Oz you're up for a card Let's see All what right. you got. Ah! A terror from beyond. You're in peril. Peril. All right, that means we don't get to... We can't say anything. We Choose. cannot say anything, especially on this card. You'll see why. All right. Oh, boy. Choose one of the following card types, asset, event, or skill. Each player must discard each card in his or her hand that is of the chosen oh, card boy. type. If this is not the first copy of Terra from Beyond drawn this phase, choose two card types instead. Well, well. Um, each player has to discard it. I have a question about skills yep. there, Sage, because um, I'm noticing that they don't have costs. How do those get played? You can only uh, submit them to skill tests, like when you were investigating. So usually they also have uh, some sort of ability on them. They'll say, like, if this test is successful, it does this, or whatever along those lines. Um, they don't have a cost other than you're committing them to a skill. Got it. Yep. Okay. Um, then let's... Um, I say <clears throat> events. Oh! Nice noise. Oh! All right. Oh. I just lost three of my five cards. Wow. Oh, I am so sorry. I just, That's lost, okay. I just lost two of my five. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure good. we would have lost lots of cards anyway. So. Do, I, do I shuffle yeah. them into my deck now? No, they are discarded. Oh, great. So there's not... Yep. I'm not getting those back anytime soon. <laughs> nope. You sure aren't. And your discard piles face up. Oh. Well, they were both the same thing. You can look. They were pre Ooh, preposterous catches. Those are really good. <laughs> you, you, you made him discard the events that gets him more card draw. <laughs> yeah. Here, make your hand smaller with no chance to make it bigger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. I think those were the deck that I had built for me by Mr. Scott. I think there's only two of those in my hand, too. And they Correct. Were both you can only have two copies of any card. There they go. <laughs> yeah. um, no events it, for anyone. I'm trapped in a damn closet. All right. Oz, I can tell you don't, don't listen to the, to the, uh, you don't listen to the Mythos Busters because we discussed this card at length 
and uh, <laughs> which which is the optimal choice based on the state of the game. Oh. And what would you say? Yeah, so skills. skills. Early on skills. skills. Yeah, because you and and late on the in the game, like really near the end, probably assets, because most people have all their assets out. Right. And That's early fair. on s- skills, you use them more to pass bigger tests, which are usually near the end of the scenario, like a boss comes out or something like that, right? Um, and usually events are they're usually pretty powerful like at any point in the game so events would be probably the last thing you would choose but right i under, i see yeah, so no, so guys listen, but you heard it here first everyone not only go. not only are you getting the role play but you're also getting pro tips about this game when you guys played at home um pro tips yeah let's let's get through the rest of the mythos phase and then we'll take our break mm-hmm. for the night or for, okay. Uh, okay. our first break anyway um all right so that would be it's my turn now encounter encounter I've got, oh, there's Beyond the Veil. Um, mm-hmm. the, great, put Beyond the Veil into play in that area, in your, if there's no copy of Beyond the Veil in your threat area, yeah. I've got d- cards in my deck, so I'm okay. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, but I do have to put it out here. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then draw again, right? Yep, the old Surge. Surge, <laughs> Surge, I, I drank a lot of that soda when I was in high school. Um, <laughs> Ancient evils, revelation. It says, dark forces stir against you. If you do not act quickly, a sinister plot will be fulfilled. Um, oh, jeez. I need to get out of the library. Uh, place one doom. Place one doom on the current agenda. There you go. There you go. The key text of that is, this This effect can cause the current agenda to advance. In other words, so you- if, if this card would have put us at seven then we would not have waited right correct it would just boom it would advance okay mm-hmm. and yeah. we have hi, hi. speaking of we have three dooms now yep we'll put this in the discard all right scott let's see it let's see what happens in your encounter Oof. oh boy uh-oh <laughs> so i got a yithian observer <laughs> Which an event card I had would do great work against him. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at you, Jenny Barnes, the one percent thinking you're better than everyone else. No. <laughs> no. So Jenny, um, Jenny just got this started. <laughs> this is her first time investigating. <laughs> uh, so prey basically means when it has to choose between two investigators, prey gives it a priority. Um, because I drew it, it is engaged with me. Um, so if I do anything besides fight, evade, parlay, which we haven't seen yet, or resign, it will attack me. It gets an attack of opportunity. Uh, so force, when the Yithian Observer attacks you, discard one card at random from your hand. Mm. If you cannot, Yithian Observer deals plus one damage and plus one horror for this attack. Yikes. And so down by the bottom, you see the little heart and the little sanity. That's the damage it does each time it swings. And then it also has victory one. So when it dies, it goes into what's called a victory display. So we only have to kill it once per scenario, and it's worth one XP. Oh, it it doesn't go in the discard. This is particularly brutal because what it's doing is it's, it's going to seek out the person with fewest cards in their hand and cause them to discard another one. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. It's a mini boss. Fun. This, these ones. Anything with victory usually is like a mini boss. Right. God. Yeah. Well, the 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 void is out to get you, Leo. Uh huh. All right. Well, that's that. I guess uh, that's our mythos phase, right? Mm-hmm. So, having said that, well, we're gonna take our first break for the night, guys. Things are just getting started. We haven't even. Uh, man, me and Jenny, uh, Daisy and Jenny haven't even managed to do anything yet. And um, Leo is over oh, there. We've done, we've, we've done stuff. It just hasn't been any right. good. Nothing <laughs> useful yet. yet. Uh, Leo, however, has, um, uh, against all odds, managed to gra- grab not one, not two, but three <laughs> scoops of slime. <laughs> yeah. And um, and uh, they're they're really useful ones at that. We're gonna be right back. I can't believe that we've had so many stream bosses this evening already. Did we just get another s- stream boss? Is that a is that a Maybe. thing? The, it says that Stokes Stokes is the stream boss again. I didn't notice. Oh. 
I didn't <laughs> notice the event that occurred. If that's the case, then what we will do is when we... Why don't we spin the wheel now? Yes. And, um, and then while we're thinking on it, uh, while we're gone, we can dis we can think on what exactly the effect of that is going to be, or, or Stokes yeah. can anyway. Um, right. So go ahead and do that. Yeah, Stokes Stokes donated f donated five bucks uh, nice. to make make Scott suffer. So thank you. <laughs> oh, still. Let's see what it says. Um. It's minus one health again, Stokes. You get to decide who it happens to, but I think that decision has already been made. We'll give the break, the five-minute break, um, Stokes some time to see if he's gonna. He, they're gonna change their mind, and Scott will not have to lose one health. Yep, but um, yep. confirmed, confirmed. Just to go ahead right, and take that damage, Scott. Scott. Please. Yeah, I just, I assumed. Yeah. All right. Well, we will be right back with our from our break after a quick five-minute break, and um, and stick around, guys. There's a lot more fun to be had, I am sure. Um, and uh, so yeah. Bye bye. We'll be right back.